climbed to the top of Century Tower, just outside of this magnificent auditorium, and looked west past the stadium in Lake Alice, you could see my apartment complex, McGuire Village and University Village South, a beautiful graduate student housing community made of 44 historic brick buildings and hundreds of enormous trees. You might have even passed it on the way here today. But that place of tradition and tranquility, a part of this campus for over 50 years and my home for the last five, is scheduled to be closed and demolished in just a few months because our university, like so many others, has been unable to value it for what it really is, not only one of UF's best assets and possibly the highest rated graduate student housing in the country, but truly, and I mean this, one of the greatest achievements of mankind. Dramatic, I know. Now, it's okay if you chuckle because I am actually claiming that an extraordinary human achievement is right here on campus and about to be lost forever, which sounds ridiculous, right? You might be thinking, why should we care about some dusty old buildings used for graduate housing on one college campus? Aren't there more important things to worry about, like poverty, war, or social justice? Well, the short answer is, this place is uniquely human. It is a cultural melting pot unlike any other, as we are one of the biggest, loveliest, and most affordable places for graduate student housing on Earth. And whether we save or destroy this wellspring of human understanding may just determine how we tackle all those other world problems as well. And I have seen what this place means to people and what the village represents. Over 25,000 years of history as people's homes, if you value the lived experiences of 500 residents a year for the last 50 years. And I do, because home matters and history matters. And for generations, these buildings have formed the backbone of the lives of graduate students on UF campus. McGuire Village helps bond together people from the most diverse backgrounds and corners of the globe, which is why everyone loves this place. While here, I have had the privilege to learn history at a Chilean Independence Day celebration, eat dumplings at Chinese New Year's festivities, and grow a bountiful garden with my Indonesian colleagues. I have played football with my Ghanaian neighbors, soccer with my Turkish neighbors, and baseball with my Korean neighbors. I have attended a Latvian birthday party, a Haitian picnic, and a Bangladeshi music jam. Now, the point is not to brag about how truly blessed with experience I have been, but to try to invite you to see this place as more than just affordable housing. It has been home to us, and a place that makes such wonderful memories possible should not just be thrown away. Real kumbaya vibe, right? But the joy that I used to see in my neighbors has been replaced with a sorrow that is hard to swallow. Our tranquility was shattered by those who did not see this beauty and made the decision to force us from our homes, belittle our community, trample our rights, and hide all this from the public. But in this talk's illumination moment, I hope to shine some light on the origins of our overlooked uh, struggle because we can still do something to save this wonderful place, the place I and so many have called home. But first of all, you should know that our struggle at McGuire Village isn't an isolated incident. It's a problem being faced by graduate students throughout the country. For instance, in the last few years, schools in Missouri, New Hampshire, and even down the road in Tallahassee all tore down graduate student living spaces, most with no adequate plans for replacement and most with little heed to the impact it had on the families and international students affected. It seems that at most institutions, graduate students are an afterthought, if for no other reason than we are outnumbered. Numbers change from year to year, but to give a rough estimate, the US has about 20 million undergrads and 4 million graduate students, or a five to one ratio. Although at UF, we're closer to four to one. Due to their smaller numbers, graduate students get less funding allocations for their priorities on the whole, mostly because they have little representation on student governing boards. Additionally, about one third of all grad students in the U US are international students, compared with less than 5% of undergrads. And at UF, 
over 70% of the students living in our on-campus graduate villages are international students, making it an oasis for those students who could not otherwise attend, either due to lack of documents when they first arrived, like a driver's license, or lack of funds, or lack of trust to make a contract with an off-campus facility sight unseen. With their diversity comes many benefits, but the one negative is that many of these students are unfamiliar with the U.S. legal system, which can have a chilling effect on their ability to stand up for their rights. All this puts graduate students at a perpetual disadvantage, and which makes the small concessions we do have, like on-campus graduate family housing, that much more important to preserve. What I conclude from this is, graduate students are a minority group within higher education and the country and should be protected as such. With constant demands on their time and mental health due to teaching, research, and family, having safe spaces and a welcoming community is crucial to prevent burnout and allow them to do the job they were brought here to do, namely, help the university succeed. So what rights do these graduate students have, especially to self-determination in their own housing? Unfortunately, the answer is pretty depressing. If you live on campus, you basically have no control over your basic rights. And I think that needs to change. So who does decide what happens on campus? In Florida, as in many states, it's not really anyone students can vote for. You see, in one sense, students who live on campus are sort of politically homeless, existing in a jurisdictional black hole. Even if you are allowed to vote in city and county elections, those municipal governments will still consider campus to be a state government enclave outside of their jurisdiction. So those officials can't effectively represent us because they literally don't have say over the very land we live on, the land we are on right now. And if you think that student government elections are our ticket to representation, think again. Besides having no actual power to change university policy, these campus elections can be rife with problems as they lack public oversight. Just last year, all but two of the ballots cast by on-campus graduate students were thrown out, including mine, with no recourse. So it seems that anywhere we turn, our votes are either meaningless or ignored. That is democracy failing us on a fundamental level. Voting is not a game. It determines whether or not we have a just society. People need to have a check on their government, even if that government is a university, which is why I believe that all public universities, universities should be governed via directly elected officials, not appointees or staff. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if we all, students, faculty, alumni, got to vote on who was in charge at UF for all major positions? up to and including university president. Right, good. Oh. <laughs> now, thank you. Unfortunately, the power of most universities rests in unelected officials. And what that means is anyone residing on campus is living in a pseudo authoritarian state, one in which they have no say over the laws or rules which govern their everyday life. This happens, this is happening on campuses throughout the US, a country which prides itself on representative democracy. And that is a very upsetting thought. But thinking more positively, I want to stay positive. Um, if the people of the state are the true owners of a public campus, then we are our own landlords. We just have to assert that right. Sounds easy again, right? But uh, as you can imagine, fundamental claims like that are not acknowledged without persistence. What this boils down to is primordial politics or the very beginnings of what it takes to have a functioning government. How we handle free speech and other political topics is a debate raging on campuses today, but I find the solution is simple. Let the people who live there make the decision on what they want. 
Unfortunately, again, with the decision to take away our homes at McGuire Village, we were denied that seat at the table. Again, because graduate students have been marginalized in today's society. So, you might still be wondering, why would anyone want to destroy a peaceful community of international graduate students? What benefit could that possibly achieve? Well, none, but if you dig deeper, you find that the blunt and haunting answer is ranking. Unless you have been living under an off-campus rock for the last few years, you have probably heard about our university embarking on a quixotic quest to improve its ranking in the ever-present U.S. News and World Report list, which um, comes out, has come out every year since 1983. We were not alone in this, as many universities cite improving rankings in their strategic plans. At UF, we called ours Drive to Five, as top officials tried to get us to be one of the so-called top five public universities in the country a task at which they succeeded a few years ago and have been promoting ever since. But we should not be proud of this shallow accolade, not only because it is a bad measure of success, but because of the pain it has caused real people, like my friends and neighbors. At its core, the entire premise of placing ordinal numbers on learning institutions is deeply flawed. I mean, can you imagine if the college football championship were decided not by play on the field, but by which team received more alumni donations or had a better player to coach ratio? It's a ranking system that does not make sense, but don't take my word for it. Back in 2009, Harvard's president warned that the growth of this ranking system was part of a larger abdication to outsiders about what the real purpose of a university should be. In 2021, top-ranked Princeton's president called college rankings a wacky obsession that does harm when taken too seriously. And just last year, in 2022, Yale's law school pulled out of the rankings altogether, calling them profoundly flawed for disincentivizing the public interest, leading to an exodus among other top law schools throughout the country. Now, that was welcome news, but the one thing missing from all those Ivy League leaders' statements is a personal concrete example like I am sharing here today, that because of this focus on a meaningless ranking number published by some for-profit third-party magazine, yes, magazine, you know, like Vogue or something, I and hundreds of others are about to lose our home and the world is about to lose a truly special place forever. Now, keep in mind that top five rankings so often touted in our school's promotional material only applies to undergrads. Everything else, from staff to the environment to graduate students and their housing, don't affect that primary ranking, and therefore any resources allocated to those other worthy things are seen as liabilities not assets. By this flawed logic, we are less than unseen. We are seen as a hindrance. Now, I love UF, but I feel I should not have to explain the benefit that graduate degrees give to society, but suffice it to say that more inventions are made, cures are discovered, and secrets of the universe unlock when graduate students flourish. Teaching of undergrads also improves, which is why Tearing down McGuire Village or any similar graduate student housing is like killing the golden goose. The fact is, graduate students who live on campus do better than those who don't. And not just in grad school, but afterwards. Former residents of UVS and McGuire have gone on to help the US win Olympic gold medals, start million dollar companies and compete for prestigious international awards like the Carbon X Prize. Countless others have gone on to become professors or industry leaders, or started a family all thanks to the head start that places like McGuire Village provide. Campus graduate housing is an incredibly modest investment in recruiting and retaining the top talent that pays off exponentially, which is why the short-sighted decision to tear down our homes 
is not only bad and, and doesn't only harm our university, but, but that of society in general. As a country, we would do whatever it took to maintain something like the Statue of Liberty, so why not invest in our similar beacon of hope right here? A welcoming and heavenly place of belonging that is open to people from all over the world. So ask yourself, as I mentioned at the beginning, what is the greatest achievement of mankind? Would society be able to recognize it once they had it? Is it a play by Shakespeare, perhaps? Or our trip to the moon? Is it the iPhone? Although all those are amazing in their own right, I still like to believe that the greatest achievement is one that the world genuinely needs right now. And that is peace. Peace among all people. And maybe, just maybe, that is here at McGuire Village, just outside these doors on this very campus. It might be fleeting and that might make it more beautiful. So at least I hope it is not forgotten because for humankind to have finally achieved something, it has worked eons to make real. To discard it without fanfare would be a tragedy beyond measure. Some of you may still not be convinced. That's okay. My major is not salesmanship, it is chemistry, by the way, so I would much rather be talking to you about nanoparticles. As a matter of fact, out of all the speakers here today, I think I might be the only one who wishes they didn't have to give their talk because it is painful to talk about losing your home. For me, the last few years have been like watching a slow motion train wreck that you just can't seem to stop. But together we can stop it. Together we can make change. We can respect graduate students by giving them more autonomy, not just compared to undergrads, but compared to American citizens overall. Together, we can acknowledge that living on campus makes life better for students and that graduate student diversity drives innovation and university success, not the pursuit of some ridiculous ranking. And together, we can see that a little bit of world peace can be achieved, even if to most people, it just looks like some dusty old buildings. Thank you.